Okay, how many problems we got? Is that it? Are you sure that's it? Anyway, who did I give the packet to? Walk. Yeah, that's the next chapter. Okay. Who stole the limit? That's the next chapter and the semester exam. Review on it. The rest of you can just get it from me. It's on the it's on the Google site, yeah. Okay, here we go. Number one D. Say what, girlfriend? What is the limit as X approaches to are we getting better at this? I don't know, I'm just looking at it for the first time now. Okay, the first thing you do when you have a limit as x approaches a number is plug in the number. What happens when you plug in the number? Zero over zero, it's indeterminate. So the first thing you should try to do is simplify it. Now, can I factor? I can factor, I don't know about you. If I were me, I would use synthetic division to factor the top. And then the bottom, of course, if you can't factor that, just go home and cook rice already, right? Okay, so after using synthetic division on the top, you get, yep. Read it off your paper. Um, two, oops. Cito. X squared minus y plus three. X minus one. Oh. What did you say? X minus one? one. X. There you go. Now I'm not going to do the synthetic division for you. You guys have. You should get x minus one times x minus two times x minus three. Did we get that? Yeah. Let me write it down. Yeah. Now I got it. Oh, the x minus twos cancel out. Now can I plug in two and get something? Yes. Height. One times two minus three negative one. All over 2 plus 2, 4, negative 1, 4. Yes. So you guys write it down in your paper. Yeah, what's going to happen when you have to do the synthetic division by yourself on the test? Okay, D. How come we get, is there a less problem now? E. Come on! Limit x approaches 0. 4 plus x squared minus 16 all over x. The first thing you do is plug in the number for x. If I plug in 0 for x, 0 over 0. What's happening? There's more, more numbers? <laughs> okay, so we need to simplify that. How do you want to try to simplify this? Probably multiply out the top, right? Yeah. Say, what are you doing? Play games? No. Okay, that's all I want to know. 16, <laughs> multiply out the top plus x squared minus 16 all over x. Or you could treat that as a difference of squares. Did anybody do that? Difference of squares? Yeah, okay, whatever. Just simplify it. Oh, the 16s cancel out. And then what can I do with this? these two things here? Factor out an x. This is called simplifying, people. That's why you spent all of these years simplifying so that when you get the calculus, you can simplify Oh, the x's cancel out. Now can I plug in 0 for x and get something? Yes, yes it rhymes with me. 8. <laughs> can't believe we did that. J. Ooh. Didn't I tell, tell, tell you guys what to do when you see a radical yesterday? Um, it rhymes with hunch again. 4x plus 1. Hanaoka, are you paying attention? <laughs> okay, the first thing you do is you plug in 2. If I plug in 2, you get 3 minus 3 over 2 minus 2. That's 0 over 0. So I need to like simplify it. When you have radicals, you multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the radical expression, which is that whole numerator, right? Now, don't forget to multiply top and bottom now. No, Mr. Park, why do I do it? I told you why you do it. Because look, 
When you multiply this out, what do you get? 4x plus 1 minus 2x plus 5, right? And then if you simplify that, what do you get when you simplify that? You get 2x minus 4. And then, I'm just going to do a new line. Factor out the 2. Some of you can kind of see it already. Because ultimately, see, this is what you want to do. You want to cancel out that thing right there. That's giving you the 0 over 0 thing. Okay, cancel that out. Now can I plug in 2? Yes, you get 2 over 3 plus 3, which is 6, one third. So I would say h, i, and j, that's all multiplied by conjugate, right? Because they're all radicals, yeah? It doesn't matter if the radicals are on the top or the bottom. You just multiply by the conjugate of the radical expression. Number two, use friend. I even tell you what to do. Hey, these look like the same problems I did yesterday. 2, A, B, C, and E. Are those, aren't those exactly the same problems I did on the board yesterday? So if I look over there, I'm only going to have D, right? Yes. <laughs> 2, D. <laughs> Limit as x approaches pi of sine x over pi minus x. Now, what happens when you plug in pi for x? You get 0 over 0. Yo, know, Mr. Park, I don't see friends. Well, that, what you gotta do is you gotta make friends. Or friends. <laughs> you guys want to make friends, man. <laughs> Watch this. I'm going to change sine x to sine pi minus x. What? Let's go back to trigonometry. Why is sine of pi minus x equal to sine x? Besides the obvious dog. One way is expand. What happens when you expand this? You get sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. But what is sine of pi? Zero. What's cosine of pi? One. No, it's negative one. Yeah. Negative one times negative times sine x is sine x. See? They're the same. Or just look at the unit circle. Here's the unit circle. Why is sine, here's angle x. Why is the sine of this angle the same as the sine of pi minus x? See, pi minus x. Why is the y-coordinate of that point equal to the y-coordinate of that point? Duh! That's why. Because of symmetry. So that's why sine of pi minus x is equal to sine x. But why do you do that? So you can have sine box over box. But that doesn't guarantee it's friend, though. Just because you have sine box over box. In order for for it to be friend, the box has to approach zero. Yeah, but Mr. Park, x is approaching pi. Yeah, that doesn't matter. The box has to approach zero. As x gets closer and closer to pi, what can you say about the box? It's getting closer and closer to zero. So therefore, that's friend. So on the test, Mr. Park, anything strange, just put one as the answer to it. Okay, number three, it says use power, I even told you to use power series, and you're oh, good, go home. 3B, 10, how, how can you do A but not B? That's so strange. That is so bizarre. Okay, plug in zero, zero over zero, and then the direction says to use power series. Now, what is the power series for 10 inverse X? Well, Yadamari, redeem yourself. Minus x to the third over three plus yeah. x to the third. Yeah, enough. <laughs> no, once you write the first two terms down, then just follow the pattern, right? The key is remembering the first two. Lift and separate, like we do all the other power series from yesterday. So what is x over x? In fact, you know that's the answer already, right? <laughs> and then that over that is x squared over 3. And then that over that is x to the 4 over 5 minus x to the 6 over 7, just, just, to, just to write it out. And then what happens when you plug in 0? This is 0, this is 0, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The only thing left is 1. So for those of you who have been doing your homework, you know already, whatever that first term is, that's the answer, right? Because all the other ones are 0. Or maybe some of you still have to discover that. C. 
you guys just look, right now you just have no idea how how useful and important power series are. You just don't know. You think I'm just making you do it just just so I have a job? Okay, if I plug in zero for x, you get zero over zero. Woo. So what do I do? Well, let's just use power series. What's the power series for e to the two x? Whose turn is it? Neil will go. E to the box then. One plus two x. One plus box plus. Okay, just there, just there. Box squared square over, and so forth, right? I'm not really sure you even did it, but that's okay. Minus one, don't forget the minus one, all over x. The ones cancel out, and then lift and separate. Okay, I'll do it. Mr. Park, they notice you write limit on every step. Do we have the two? Only if you want full credit. Okay, anyway, lift and separate. That over that is two. You know, you know that's gonna be the answer already. Right? But let's just do some more for funsies. That over this, what is this over that? It'll be, this is four x squared, so it will be four x over two factorial. That's because every single term from here has an x in it, so when you plug in zero, it's gonna be zero, 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 zero. So the only thing left is that first term, which is two. Three B C we did that four five seven four five seven four five seven four five seven Okay draw the graph of this Hello What graph is this? What is this again? That's the greatest integer function. We talked about this. There's no hint of this problem. The greatest integer function looks like this, one, two, three. So it goes like this, and then puka, and then Remember? You guys told me you did this last year in Algebra 2. And we do it in Algebra 2B and A. How can you tell me this? And of course, it keeps on going forever, right? Okay, draw the graph. Now let's answer some limit problems. A, what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? Okay, here's 2. Coming from the left. The y coordinates are getting closer to what number? The graph is getting closer to what point? This point. What's the y coordinate of that point? It runs with bun. One. Gosh, that's sad. What's the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? Well, here, okay, here's 2 right here. Coming from the right, the graph is getting closer to what point? That point right there. What's the y coordinate of that point? It runs with moon. Two. So therefore, what's the limit as x approaches two? If the left hand limit and the right hand limit are different, the limit does not exist. Were you guys here yesterday? The only way a limit can exist is if the left hand limit and the right hand limit are equal. If they're not linked equal, the limit does not exist. Okay, number five. Okay, when you see an absolute value, you do a piecewise function. Anyway, I told you to make a piecewise function. What's the problem? F of x equals x squared minus 1 over absolute value of x. So first thing you do, you make piecewise function. How come it's 1? I thought it was 0, Mr. Park. Well, what makes the inside of the absolute value 0? Rhymes with but. That's why it's 1, not 0. And then, Mr. Park, I thought it's supposed to have the or equal to 1, 1 of them. Yeah, normally you do, but this one no more. Why? Because it'll make the denominator 0. OK, so if x, now remember, when you have absolute value of gorilla, it's either equal to gorilla or negative gorilla. So if x is greater than 1, the inside is positive, so you leave it alone. Leave it alone, and then if the inside is negative, you negate it. So you're going to get this over that. You leave it alone. If the inside is positive, you negate it. If the inside is negative, it's that simple. Mr. Mr. Park, I can simplify each one. Why am I saying something Irish? 
x plus 1. And then if you factor and cancel, this comes out to negative x plus 1. And then it says graph it. Well, the easiest thing to do is graph it. Why don't we just draw the graph? OK, here's 1. How do you graph x plus 1? 2, and then the slope is 1. And then negative x plus 1 can be down here, and the slope can be negative 1, so it can look like this. This is what the graph looks like. OK, part A. What is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left? OK, here's 1. Coming from the left, what's the limit? Look. The graph is getting closer to this point right there. Here, I'll even put an arrow. What's the y-coordinate of that point? It rhymes with negative move. Negative 2. Is that the only thing I see it? What's the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? Look, coming from the right. What's the limit? Say. So therefore, what's the limit as x approaches 2? It doesn't exist because the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not the same. No. Does not exist. Oh, so the hardest problem on the whole sheet is not even up there, number 6. Look, it's fine. Yeah, it's not really the hardest problem. I just said that. <laughs> Number six. Okay, now we are not going to... Anyway, by the way, you know this problem right here? Could you have done this problem without trying the graph? Did you guys learn how to do it? Yeah. If you, if you want to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, you plug in 1 into this function because x is less than 1. That's on the left, right? If you want to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, then you just plug in 1 over there because x is greater than 1. Then you don't have to draw the graph. But I just wanted to draw it just for fun. Okay, A, what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left? Okay, so probably the best thing to do here is plug in a number very close to 0 on the left. Like negative point zero 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 one. What is 1 over negative point zero 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 one? What, hap what is 1 divided by point negative point zero 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 one? It's going to be a really huge negative number, right? What is e to a really huge negative number? What is it close to? e to the negative million. Isn't that the same thing as 1 over e to the million? That number is close to? Right to the hero. Zero. Now, What's the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? Well, plug in a number very close to 0 on the right, like positive point zero 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 one. So what is 1 over point zero 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 one? It's going to be a really large positive number. What is e to the really large positive number? A really large positive number. So that, that answers infinity. So therefore, what's the limit as x approaches 0? Here's the left-hand limit. Here's the right-hand limit. Are they the same? Wait, let me get on my calculator. No, they're not the same. The limit does not exist. Let's take up your calculator. It's not that it's being zero in infinity. OK, now in this problem, I did not really want you to draw the graph. I want, I want you to answer the questions just by plugging in. you got to know which piece to look at. Why, did you guys draw the graph? No, I'm just looking at the top for the first time now. Oh, gosh. You guys are so shameless. This is great about you. OK, part A. What is the limit as x approaches negative 4? OK, we're, okay I'm going to plug in negative 4, but w which one do I plug it into? Well, where is negative 4? Up there. Yeah, it's less than negative 2. So all you got to do is plug in negative 4 there. Negative 8 plus 8, 0. OK, B, what is the limit as x approaches negative 2? Oh, negative 2 is the border between these two pieces, right? So if I plug in negative 2 here, what do you get? Gosh, people. Plug in negative 2 for x. Saito. And then there. Oh, so if the left-hand limit is 4, 
and the right hand limit is 4, therefore the limit is 4. You have to plug into both of them. Because one of them gives you the left hand limit, you plug it in here, that tells you the right hand limit. Okay, C. What's the limit as x approaches 1? Where, is, where does 1 lie? Is it greater than 3? Are you my mother? <laughs> no, it's between here. And, so just plug in 1 there. 1 squared is 1. Come on. D. What's the limit as x approaches 3? Ooh, 3 is the border between these two. So you have to check both the left hand limit and the right hand limit. So if I plug in 3 here, what do you get? 9. Plug in 3 there. 7. So the left hand limit is 9, but the right hand limit is 7. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Are you guys catching on? Of course, you can get these same answers by drawing it, but I'm trying to teach you to do it without trying to draw it. What is the limit as x approaches 4? Where does 4 lie? Right here, greater than 3. So just plug in 4. 16 minus 5 is 11. You're done. If you can plug in the number and get something, that's the answer. Okay, so tonight's homework. Oh, question. No. By the way, your coach sent me an email. Yeah, I thought she told me. How come she sent me an email for you but didn't send me an email for Park? Because you're more responsible than Park, right? <laughs> yes. Because Park didn't tell me anything, she was just gone. <laughs> Disappeared. It was a jolly holiday for her. <laughs> okay, let me look at tonight's homework. Tonight's homework is limits three. Now, this is like a practice test. So it's just a bunch of limits all grouped together. So that's tonight's homework. So we'll discuss that whenever the next class is. So you have to check in tomorrow. Half of, Over half of you will be gone right from the AP exam. So. And what's on Monday? What test is that? Physics? Who's taking the physics test? So, May, I don't know. Check in. Anyway, what cycle is next? 7, 8, 1, 2, 5. Oh, so all the PCH classes are in the afternoon. Check in. Am I taking the AP exam or are you? No, no, no. Where is it in this room? No, when? when? I don't know when. You don't have to have it Wednesday. No, because Wednesday is the another AP test, right? Yeah. It's just nice. And then we were thinking of period six, because uh, I said Tuesday yesterday, but no. period six said so no, because we've got to cram for the AP exam <laughs> on Wednesday. Because that's AP US issue? Yes. Then yeah, probably Thursday then. So we'll discuss, I don't know, just show up and I'll tell you. Just show up and we'll figure things out. Nobody will get hurt. Okay, we are done. Oh, Chaj walks in just as we're done.